On to the Story Haunt podcast today, we're very lucky to have Ingrid Silvestri. Ingrid Silvestri is the creator of Giraffe World, and Ingrid has created several songs and stories that are available to buy and download in the Bookshelf Download Store. Ingrid is also the creator and performer of the Story Phones listening song, and anyone who has a Story Phones system or Story Phones MP3 players will know Ingrid's song very, very well indeed. So, Ingrid, you're very welcome here today. To, um, so glad that you've come along to talk to us. We're I'm just going to ask you a few questions about Giraffe World and about the characters behind them as well. Thank you. Ingrid, why did you choose to do audio stories? I find them a very immediate sort of medium because I, I write the stories and I like to do storytelling, so it's a sort of natural outlet for that. And you can record them quite quickly in a recording studio and then do the editing and they're then ready for, for the market and they're also very good for using with the interactive smart boards you can put the illustrations up there and then other resources for the school staff. What made you choose the PSH themes for your stories and songs? It was actually, uh, I was doing some creative workshops in primary schools and the teachers said that my material would be very suitable for PSHE and I'd actually not heard of PSHE so I, I didn't quite know what it was but when I researched it I realised that, that they were suitable because I'd been doing creative art, creative writing and music workshops um, but the themes for PSHE were all actually present in the stories I'd already done and then I've been writing more specifically your stories, they have, they have some really, really nice ideas. Um, so where, where do you get your ideas from, Ingrid? The ideas, uh, well, somebody told me I had more neck than a giraffe, <laughs> um, which everybody agreed with. So I, I got the idea of sticking your neck out for your dreams and having lots of neck. And So it's, it's a sort of motivational theme, but it's also got that kind of slight gleeful cheekiness. And um, I placed them in Giraffe World, which is a planet that I've actually said is set in Camelopardalis constellation, which is a real constellation, the Giraffe constellation. And on Giraffe World, it's totally populated by giraffes. So there's the, the two-legged character giraffes that wear clothes and live in houses. And then there's the wild giraffes that are a bit more like our giraffes. And all the dogs have got long necks and the birds and everything, so it's totally giraffified. And I know, um, having seen all, knowing, I know your pictures very well, and I know if you and your children um, have a look at the pictures, the detail in there, and all the little, all of the little things that are um, sort of turned down and giraffified are really, really fun to watch and to look out for. And I think that's something that's fun for the children to see in the pictures that you've created as well. Aren't oh, they? they love them, yeah, and they like to count how many items, like the, one of the pictures of Giraffe House, and um, that was on an earlier thing that I had on greeting cards before I actually invented the Neckman family, and people, kids and adults, like to count how many giraffified objects there are, from hair dryers with long handles to spoons with long handles, and it's quite a fun thing to do. Now, you've chosen um, the PSHE themes for your stories, for your older stories and songs, um, how do you think your stories are going to help children think about um, the situations that they are in and the situations that your giraffe world characters are in in the stories? Well, they're, they're a good um, sort of discussion point for circle time and things like that. And also they're, they're quite oblique, some of the stories, and I think children don't respond too well sometimes when something's too obvious. They like it to have humour or whimsy or to be set in a, a different world or something. So the giraffe world's a good setting for that, but it's it's got parallels. So, for instance, in the story, Necky Becky's scruffy scarf, when, when Necky Becky's lost her scarf, children can identify with that losing something that's precious and that maybe other people don't realise it's precious so somebody else could have taken it thinking it was valueless and that's something you can then discuss even though it's actually these funny giraffe characters doing it but I think having that oblique reference seems to sort of clinch it in their minds more somehow. Yes, I know your story, The New Beginnings, is is certainly a lovely story uh, for children who are moving on um, from a new class or from a different key stage or into a different school. I think that's a particularly lovely story for covering that sort mm -hmm. of a life event in a child's life, definitely. Oh, thank you. So Ingrid, how do you see teachers using your resources in the classroom? Well, from a straightforward storytelling point of view, obviously listening to the stories in, in listening time and story time, and also interactively, so 
the children can take in turns reading them and then maybe reinterpreting and putting different endings on, which is what I've done with them in creative writing. So it becomes a cross-curricular activity. And the, some of the resources are visuals as well. And the downloaded black and white drawings can then be made into collages. They can be enlarged, cut up, whatever. So it's, it's got a lot of different applications. Now, Ingrid, we know that you write the stories and we know that you record the stories. But could you tell us um, who writes and records your songs and does the voices for your characters? <laughs> well, I do all the voices. Um, I write all the songs as well. So I write the lyrics and then the tunes, usually. It's usually that way around. And what I do, I'm not obviously a sound engineer, so I record them very basically in layers myself. But then I take them to the great and wonderful Trevor Sewell, who's brilliant uh, instrumentally and also uh, in the sound engineering. And we actually work on them together to produce the finished recording. So you you write you write and record the songs and sing the songs yourself. So that's yeah. you singing the songs as well. It's me singing yes, the voices. Right. Yeah. So mm -hmm. I learnt totally by accident that I can, I can do these squeaky voices and and strange voices. And the first time I did it, I was actually alone um, in the house, and I did it at three in the morning because I didn't want anybody else to hear it. And I was sitting there really embarrassed, <laughs> so doing Naki Becky's voice, which is very squeaky, and it was the song um the the chorus goes stick your neck out <laughs> i was just going to ask you if you could do some voices actually but you, you've beaten me to it so um so you do all the voices as well so yes, can you give us yeah. another sample of the voices well that was necky becky and then you've got girth who goes food get it down your necks everybody right ingrid well while we're talking about characters and um, stories and songs I, I do have to ask you and i'm sure other people would want to know as well um, where you got the idea for the song that accompanies the story Giraffes Who Wouldn't Eat Sprouts because that's a very, very funny song and <laughs> it would be really good to hear where that came from. I can't actually remember when I first got the idea for it. I, um, it was the idea that it was Necky Becky refusing to eat sprouts. That idea came into my mind at some point that all the giraffes like sprouts and Necky Becky wouldn't eat them because a lot of kids don't eat sprouts and it's a sort of fairly commonplace thing saying I'm, I'm not going to eat sprouts on the necky becky says i've told you i won't eat sprouts and i'm i'm into environmentally friendly things and sort of an energy and and ecology and things so the story arose the the idea of an alternative energy resource was the uh, the afgas which is anatomically friendly flatulence <laughs> I say at this point, if you've not heard Ingrid's Afghast song, you you must at least go and listen to the clip on the store. It's very, very funny. It had all of us in the office giggling and laughing when we heard it, um, when our Ingrid first sort of uh, sent it through for us to have a listen to. <laughs> and I must point out that the, the sound effects in the song are actually done on a synthesiser. <laughs> Ingrid, who's your favourite character in your drag oh, world? That's difficult. Um, I love... Raf G. Neckman, the dad. Um, Necky Becky, I initially thought Necky Becky would be the core character for children, um, but by asking children, I find that there's actually a, a very broad range of characters that they like best. So I'm supposed to be saying what I like, which one I like best, aren't I? I, I, I love them all, really. <laughs> but I think Raf G. Neckman and Necky Becky are probably the two favourites. Uh -huh. yeah. So you find, um, obviously, you've got a real range of characters, so you find that. Um, the children that sort of identify with different characters and different aspects of the character as well. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And then that then feeds into the, the PSHE theme of, of your stories and songs as well. That, yeah, that yeah. different characters present different situations and the children can relate to them. Yeah, because yeah. Necky Becky is the middle child and she's quite awkward. And her older sister Nexie's very talented and very popular and pretty, so there's a bit of sibling rivalry. And sometimes the kids can identify with Necky Becky if they're feeling a bit like the underdog. But then again, sometimes they'll identify with Nexie because she's very creative and fashion conscious. Um, so it depends which aspect I'm drawing out in, in the story, what the story's actually about. So, and sometimes they'll identify with Hulse the next hunt dog, you know. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you very much for chatting to us today, Ingrid. It's, uh, it's really interesting and I've always, I always love to hear your voices and, and the characters that you do as well. Ingrid has, at the moment, five stories available in 
the Bookshelf Download Store to download, and she has her stories and songs, but also Ingrid is an illustrator as well, and she has done some beautiful illustrations to accompany the audio stories and songs, and I think, I'm hoping that perhaps not before too long, Ingrid will have some more stories and songs available for you to download as well. So thank you very much, Ingrid, for talking to us today. Thank you. Thank you. It's been a pleasure.